Hello and welcome to the next video of my LPL Summer 2022 preview. We're covering Victory 5, the team that finished first place in Spring Split. In, I mean, yeah, first place in Spring Split going 14-2. and two. Um, Academy, they also finished first place going 19-3 and three during the regular season. Um, very good team, very good Academy team. Um, quite a few players that are still under contract that pr are probably going to get a shot in um, the LPL when their contracts are up next year and the year after that. Um, very, very good team top to bottom. Similar to a couple other teams I'm doing now that we're at the top of the board. There really isn't room for players to be swapped out. It's kind of like this is your starting five and, um, you know, go with it. So, watching this team, they play a very clear style. Um, that top lane Rich is by himself a lot. Um, and that shows in his stats. He had a 48% KP and a 16.5% uh, um, kill participation. I mean, um, kill share. He really did not involve himself all that much. He was, you know, you're on your own over there and you're uh, kind of solo dolo. Um, played 11 champions in 37 games. I'd like his CS to be higher. 8.32 is good for a top laner. We want it above 8, you know, 8 to 8.5. Eight um, but given that he didn't play with the team very much, he was on his own so often, you would like those numbers to be even better. Um, I do think that the weakest player on the team is um, based on um, comparing them to other players within the role. It's PP God. But uh, Rich is definitely a close second. I think Rich at times did hurt this team um, and other times was, you know, solid. But I feel like if there is a player on this team that can hurt them at times, it is Rich. Um, Invincible played in two games, I mean three games, sorry, with the big club, Victory 5. He did very well, 8, 7, 9 CS per minute, participated in over half of fights, only got 10% kill share, um, gold share 21.4, about where Rich is. Um, very good farming. Uh, he had Graves in one game and Gragas in another, and I think Jax was the third champion. So um, a little bit of everything. You got a tank, a, a carry, and um, a uh, you know split pusher and Jax. So, excuse me. Um he also had very, very good numbers in Academy, so I think he will have an LPL slot next year. Jungle Carsa, we all know Carsa. Carsa is a veteran, as is Rookie. This Carsa rookie duo here is up there in age when it comes to league standards. Carsa, 5.41 CS per minute, solid, 66.2% KP, also solid, 20% um, kill share, return on investment above the gold share, which is good. He's impacting the game. He played 14 champions in 38 games. He can play anything, and that is massive. That is massive. Looking at this team, every player played double digits worth of champions. That is huge. That is an aspect of a team that not many can say they have. Um, Carsa played fantastic. League of Legends. XLB played in a couple games as well. Um, under 5 CS per minute. 65.8% uh, KP. Um Gold share and kill share were about equal. Um, you know, played in a couple of games when Carsa couldn't. Uh, you know, um, I think he's kind of stuck in the middle here. Um, you got Carsa at the top, and then you have PZX in Academy, who did fantastic. Um, 5.79 CS per minute. Um, clearly a carry-oriented jungler. 62% um, KP is much lower than you'd like it to be. You want it in the 70s. Um, you know, Carso is a little bit in the middle. Um, I guess 65 to 70 is where you want it, depending on how much CS per minute you're getting. If you're getting under 5, I want it 70 to 75. Um, but 62 is pretty low. 20% um, kill share. Played 7 champions, which is the opposite of Carso. Very small champion pool and clearly carry oriented. So he needs a little bit more time in Academy. But given that he has this aspect to his game already, I would um, be worried if I was XLB. I'd almost want out, um, go to another team. Um, rookie, rookie CS per minute's kind of low at 816, but his KP was 71%. Rookie, obviously one of the better players in the world at his position. You know, his CS per minute is what it is. He played a lot of Karma, I believe, this past, but he played quite a few Karma games, I think. Um, and uh, Maybe he didn't. For some reason, I feel like he did, and um, that, that probably hurts his CS per minute. 25% kill share, obviously the secondary carry on this team, much higher than his gold share, which was under 22%. 
So he did work with what he was given for sure, much more than what he, I mean, and, and you have to imagine that CS per minute is what was hurting his gold share. If he is getting upwards of eight and a half to 8.6, that gold share is probably in the mid 22s to higher 22%. Um, played 15 champions as well, so he played damn near everything. Um, Dream behind him, very good player, 8.83 CS per minute, 6.5 KD. Um, not as team-oriented, 64% KP, more carry-oriented, 29% carry. Uh, played 9 champions, a little bit bigger champion pool than PZX. Um, obviously, another player that we probably should get used to seeing their name because I imagine they're going to be in the LPL um, around 2023-2024 um, when their contract's up. Bot lane Fodic. Uh, Fodic's numbers are hard to, um, you know, his CS per minute is only 9.13, and that's because he played a ton of Senna, more than I feel like most players did. I would even, without looking at stats, say he's probably played more Senna than 95% of the 80 carries in the world um, this past spring, and he played a fantastic Senna. There were games where he carried on Senna. Um, 33% kill share, 71% KP. That's very good for an 80 carry. Above 70% is nice to see. Um, 6.38 KDA, uh, 12 champions played. 12 champions played is probably the most stunning part of this because you see um, throughout this, the 80 carries play the least amount of champions. The, the meta is pretty well set in stone. But Fodic went against that, and that provided Victory 5 a lot more options in draft. And I think that's why, you know, they were able to finish first. And we'll see how summer goes if they can continue that trend. Um, PP got, um, before we get to support, Kepler, also another Academy player ready to go. 982 CS per minute, 5.7 KDA. Um, more of a by himself kind of guy, 64% KP. So he's more in the side lane, involving himself in big fights, but not oftentimes, you know, going to Rift Herald and things like that. 32% kill share, so clearly a carry. Only played six champions, which is normal for an AD carry. Very different than Fodic. So, um, you know, that's not that shouldn't hurt him when it comes to finding a job in the next couple of years. Support PP God, uh, 4 2 3, 67%, played 10 champions. Um, if you had told me going into this that the support would play the least amount of champions, I would have probably, you know, told, said you were lying, uh, but he did. Um, PP God played solid. His Nautilus was really good. Um, his Nautilus is what's sticking out to me right now. Um, Jerry in support, very similar, 66%. Um, played. Gotten more fights than Kepler did, which is good. I like that the support is, um, you know, more active in fights than the AD carry. If it's the other way, it makes me wonder why is the AD carry um, leaving lane to fight or roam and the support is not initiating and getting involved. It, it's weird. Um, so, yeah, this academy team is very, very good. I could see any of the players being on an LPL roster by 2024. I know a couple of them have their contracts up. At the end of this year, and I would be very surprised if they re up to play for Victory 587, I think is the name. So, um, you know, this obviously there is no room on the main roster for them, but they are ready for the lower tiers of the LPL when it comes to being a starter. So, excuse me. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. I'm doing my LPL um, previews right now. Uh, I'm doing a lot of videos all at once because I'll be out of town for a couple days. Right now, actually, this video, I am out of town, I believe. Um, so, comment down below. I will be looking at comments and things like that. Obviously, babysitting my videos, and um, I love talking about League. So, if you're a Victory 5 fan, comment down below. How do you think they're going to do um, in the upper echelon of the LPL? Uh, subscribe to the channel, like I said, for daily content, and thank you for watching.